Hello everybody! I have finally reached a point in my book purchasing habits where I am very happy with my current collection of medieval calligraphy books, other types of calligraphy as well, but of course mostly medieval, that's what I am primarily interested on. So I figured, especially with the holidays coming along, this would be a perfect time to do a book collection slash review. I will talk a little bit about what I use the, each book for and why I like it, ideally to help you make an informed decision of which book you would like to purchase, if you would like to do so. I have separated the collection in categories depending on what I use it for, so we're gonna go in some sort of logical order. And I would like to start off with my absolute favorite, and it was also the first calligraphy book I purchased, which is Mark Drogan's Medieval Calligraphy, Its History and Technique. I love this book because not only does it give you very detailed practice sheets in order for you to learn how to do each style of calligraphy, but it also gives you a really comprehensive historical background of each type of calligraphy. In fact, the first half of the book almost is all history and theory, which is fascinating. You can, if you don't even feel like doing calligraphy at some point, but you still want to read about it, there is so much here to just read about. And then even once he goes into the actual scripts and teaching you how to do them, he still involves some uh, historical fun facts and details to give you more context on what it is that you're learning. Something that I appreciate on this one and in pretty much all of the books that I have is that when they show you manuscript plates, they specify what uh, manuscript they're coming from so that you can actually look into it and if it is available on the internet for public reading you can actually check out the rest of the manuscript as well. So in a way this books not only serve as a great secondary source research material but they also guide you into how to find good primary sources that would be helpful and exactly what you're looking for. On to the second book this one is also a practice sheet type of book that shows you how to actually make different scripts. It is just called Calligraphy, a Comprehensive Guide to Beautiful Lettering, and this one is by Jane Sullivan. I mentioned when I was making my Unseal calligraphy tutorial that I like referencing multiple books when I'm learning a new script. This is because I don't want the way that I do a script to look exactly like someone else. When I look for multiple sources, aside from getting different angles of what it could have looked like, since of course if you have multiple scribes working at any given point, everything is going to look a little bit different, but it also gives me space to explore what I like better and the way that I want my words, my letters to look like, and in that way develop a bit more of my own style. So this book shares a lot of the same scripts that Mark Drogan goes into, but in many cases they're a little bit different and that gives you a different perspective of what letters could have looked like. Another thing that I really like about this book is that it also gives you some papery, crafty instructions of different things to do with paper and how to use your calligraphy. For example, there's this uh, really cool one with folded paper. So that part, that little detail element on this is great for when you feel like doing something special but you don't really know what to do it in. Sometimes we just get a little bored of just doing quotes on a piece of paper. <laughs> so this one gives you some ideas of how else you can use your calligraphy. The next book in the collection, you have definitely seen it multiple times before. It is the Bible of Illuminated Letters. This one starts transitioning into my next category of books. So this one does give you a lot of script practice sheets. So I also use it to compare certain alphabets with the other two previous books that I mentioned. But this one also goes into making illuminated letters and it is very specific on it. Not only explaining the process of illumination, but also giving you examples of designs and certain elements that stand out throughout different time periods along with different types of script. Just like the other two books, this one also gives you some historical background on it. Nothing, of course, as comprehensive as Mark Drogan. If you want one with a lot of historical background, I'm just gonna keep highlighting that book. But these two, the calligraphy, the Jane Sullivan one and this one, both also give you some historical background with each script that they teach you. This one I have shown many times, so I'm gonna move into 
the next one, which is uh, one that is specific for illuminated letters. This one goes really in depth in the process of illumination. It just shows you with tons of pictures, everything that was and is involved in the process of illuminating pages. This one does not have actual script practice sheets. That is not what this book is for. So if you're looking for something that gives you both, that gives you the practice sheet and the illumination, I would go for the illuminated letter one but if you already have uh, books that you like in terms of practice sheets and you just want to get into illumination this one would be awesome now although this one does include some plates and excerpts from actual manuscripts it is not the most prevalent aspect of this book this one is just about process and education so if you would like a book that provides you with more actual extant examples uh, to use as inspiration or to copy if you like a very specific style I would then move on to books that focus on that specifically. So then moving on to the ones that I would call more of my research books rather than my hands-on practice books, you can go for something more academic like uh, understanding illuminated manuscripts. This one is great in terms of almost using it as a, as a dictionary, as a manuscript dictionary. It gives you tons of explanations for very specific terms used when researching manuscripts. Manuscripts. This is just a handy one to have on the side. I would say this is not the most important one to have. You can probably Google stuff, but the problem with Googling stuff is you can get many different opinions about what certain words mean. The good thing about this is it guides you into a specific path that is very specific to, of course, medieval illuminated manuscripts. It also shows you a lot of uh, extant pages and full color by the way all of these i think yes all of them except for my drogan are full color books which i love also they're all going to be listed below in the same order that i am talking about them so yes this one works as a kind of dictionary and a study companion in order to understand perfectly what people are talking about when reading more academic excerpts of historical background of manuscripts and then if you want just plays just extant manuscripts to look at. Here are two books that are great for that. Let's start with this one. This one you have seen in my channel plenty of times before. I use it all the time. It is called The Book of Bibles. It is a Tashin publication and, and that is what it is. It is all Bibles throughout the medieval period and it is glorious. It does go into the historical background and explanation of each Bible along with full page illuminations and illustrations full color of each one. I absolutely love this. I like the way that it is organized as well. It is not necessarily organized in chronological order, but it's more organized by category of Bibles that make sense with each other. Like for example, there is a section on Jewish and Eastern Orthodox, if you want to move away from the more typical in the Western world Christian manuscripts. So it's more organized by category rather than chronological order, the way that a lot of these books are organized. And then for the second one that I I love using for image references is the Illuminated Manuscripts book. This one is more specific to showing pages of really grand illuminated manuscripts. It's basically a collection of some of the most beautiful pages. This one to me is basically like the inspiration Pinterest board of <laughs> Illuminated Manuscripts. It's just every single page has a gorgeous, gorgeous page of a manuscript and it goes into details of, of the pages. It tells you where what manuscripts they're from, of course, so you can look up the whole thing, but it's just, it's just focusing on the art. It's focused on the actual illumination and it's absolutely beautiful great source of inspiration, not as overwhelming as, as this Bible over here. <laughs> Something that I appreciate about this book is that there's a chapter on secular works, which is hard to find because so many manuscripts, the vast majority were, were religious in nature. So I like, I appreciate that they, they give a little extra attention, spotlight to other stuff that has nothing to do with religion. Now, before I finish this collection slash gift guide or whatever you want to use this video for, I wanna give a couple of honorable mentions 
I am calling them honorable mentions because they don't really have much to do with calligraphy, but they do have to do with medieval research and I do enjoy them, I love them, and I want to talk about them here because I don't see why else I would talk about them very much. One of them is the Getty Museum's publication of Fashion in the Middle Ages. This is basically focusing on medieval attire and specifically it's, it's illustrations of it and its presence in medieval manuscripts. So you do have a lot of manuscript pages here. So it does have a bit more to do with that, it's just the focus is not about the scripts and the and the techniques for illumination, the focus is on the clothes. The cool thing about this is that if you are making illumination involving people, you can take a lot of, inspir a lot of inspiration for this in terms of what they wear and what they look like in general. Also, if you're into sewing, I still have the fantasy idea of one day making myself a medieval dress and I will definitely use this as an inspiration. I will actually I'll show you in the camera the one that is my favorite. This is just such a gorgeous dress to me. I would like to make it a little shorter so I can actually wear it. But one day, one day this will happen and you will know because I will bring you along with me. It'll be great. And the second honorable mention is Maggie Black's The Medieval Cookbook. I actually got this recently and I'm not gonna go too much into it here because this has a lot to do with the next video coming up. So now you have an idea of what that will be about. It's about cooking. But the cool thing about this book is that it's not just a cookbook. It also gives you a lot of historical background. There is definitely a theme and a trend on the books that I like. I like reading a lot about what the context is in history and in any given country where this is taking place. It's just more interesting to me, I get more into it that way to understand what the people were thinking and going through. I like the way that the chapters are divided. It's divided less like a cookbook, it's by category. So for example, you don't get chapters on appetizer, desserts, lunch and dinner. Those are not the chapters, the chapters are more about setting. So for example, there is a chapter that focuses on meals that show up in Chaucer's A Canterbury Tales, which is really cool. There's a chapter on Christmas feasting. You will see more of this book in my next video, so I will move on. I say Saved the best for last because this ginormous Bible here is something that I've been wanting for so long and it's it's an expensive book uh, but I don't regret it at all <laughs> it's just so good I was so excited when this arrived it's bigger than I expected it's just absolutely glorious it is called the grand medieval bestiary and it is a comprehensive list and explanations of all of the animals that show up in medieval manuscripts, uh, giving you the historical context of it, as well as what each animal would represent and why it is on the page. Aside from being a gorgeous, gorgeous book to look at and go through, it just gives you so much context of why certain elements were placed where they are. It just completes the story of any given illumination, any given page. It's not just about what the people were doing, it's also about the elements that were there, whether it's the flowers that are there, or in this case, the animals. It completes the story of what the scribe was trying to communicate. This is also going to be really helpful in terms of creating your own manuscript pages and if you want to really make it look medieval, it's not just a matter of the script that you choose and the style and the illuminated letters, it's also about every single element. So, so many of these pages were just incredibly detailed with so many elements that, that all were cohesive and had so much to do with what is written. But that's all, that's the end of my calligraphy, medieval calligraphy book collection. I hope this gives you any ideas of what you'd like to purchase if you're looking to either get into calligraphy or, or further your studies and your exploration in it. Or if you know someone who's really, really into medieval stuff and you don't know what to get them for the holidays or birthday or whatever. But I hope you're having a great end of November and I will see you soon with another video. Have a fantastic day. Bye.